Welcome to Fire Breathing Kittens, an actual play podcast. Every episode micro plot is a complete adventure with a beginning and an end that fits into the overarching macro plot of the whole season. Because they stand sturdily on their own, you can listen to these adventures in any order and can skip any you don't enjoy. Today we are playing using the combat mechanics from a game called Salvage Union. You play as a salvager, mech pilot, who scours the wasteland for salvage in scrap-built mechs. It's our first time playing, so we might make some mistakes. We'd like to say a special thank you to the game's creator, who sent us a promotional copy to play. Listeners, you can buy a copy of Salvage Union at leyline.press. That's L-E-Y-L-I-N-E dot press. And play a game with your friends. Speaking of friends, today I am joined by... Crud. Hello. Crud is a orc, half-orc, human-orc hybrid. He stands around seven foot tall. He just wears pretty much a loincloth with a with some bobbles he is not the smartest tool in the shed he is impulsive but he's lovable yeah he is and it's like a buddy cop movie today because we are joined by our second and last member demyan belov hello hello demyan is a short stock like one meter sixty something centimeter human with a shaved head and he's currently wearing his uh, pants with a lot of pockets for everything a mechanic would need, combat boots, a blue and white striped sailor vest, and a sturdy uh, jacket. Nice! We've got an engineer and an impulsive half-orc on today's adventure. We are playing Salvage Union in a one-shot game today, so I will say this right up front, because this is a one-shot game, I, the GM, have decided I'm skipping the crafting downtime requirement during our session today. Crafting time requirements can apply in, like, a longer game, more than a one-shot game, but um, for this one-shot, we're just going to skip that time requirement for crafting so that we're able to see the crafting mechanic. Are there any questions about that house rule? Nope. Nope. All right. Let's start the game. You both are on a train, sitting in seats next to one another. Guasso has quite the network of trains, and for a low, low price, you were able to take one way out of here. You were able to take one way out of here to Havas Sands. For anyone curious, this is near Mine X0347, which was in past adventures, Minesweepers and To Koboldly Go. This region is dry and mountainous. Imagine the mountains of Arizona, red rock, sparse dry bushes with brittle needles, cacti, brown earth in between spaced out sage bushes, unobstructed views all the way to the blue ridges on the horizon. That's the scenery you're both able to see out the window of the train as it slows down. The train is slowing down because you're almost at your stop. You remember the words on the flyer that brought you here today. The flyer was written by Nulasag, who had taken a prepaid job from someone named Zara Q. It said, quote, Zara is hiring adventurers to help her retrieve relics that are newly harvestable due to a series of earthquakes in the Havas Sands. Short-term job? Retrieve the relics? Give them to Zara and come home. Prepaid? $4,000 each for two days' estimated time. I'll read that again so you all can write down any details you want to remember. Zara Q is hiring adventurers to help her retrieve relics that are newly harvestable due to a series of earthquakes in the Havas Sands. Short-term job, retrieve the relics, give them to Zara, and come home. Prepaid. $4,000 each for two days' estimated time. Does anyone want any of that repeated? Nope. No. Is there, like, a description, though, of what the relics might look like? Or is it just a blanket relics? Blanket relics. Okay. I hope we can identify them. Hmm. Or if she's getting a sock. (laughs) I found this rock for you. (laughs) It's a very nice rock. (laughs) The train comes to a stop. All right, you ready uh, to 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 find 
artifacts and rocks and socks? Uh, we'd better do it fast. It's so hot here. Uh, well, you're wearing too much it's, clothes. Take off some clothes. It's not clothes. It's just I'm used to way colder temperatures. You know where I'm from? It's never this hot. You'll get used to it. I hope so. I'd better get used to it quick. Uh, if I knew it, even the 4,000... <laughs> nah. Oh, let's just do it quick. All right, well, next time, shorts and t-shirt, and you'll be good. Shall we? Just, yes, just, just let's go meet whoever hired us. They're back there. We're just here for artifacts. He pulls out the flyer. All right. See? <sighs> All right, let's just find something that's <laughs> looking out of picture in this middle of nowhere. And we step off the train. All right. You step off the train, standing outside the train on the brown earth next to a brittle scrub brush is a woman with thick raccoon eye shadow. Her black hair is tied behind her in a braid. She's incredibly thin. She looks at you fiercely and asks, Are all raising kittens? Uh, yes, we are. <laughs> si, senorita. <laughs> I am Zara. Follow me to Bastion. She starts walking towards what in our world would be called an RV. It's like a band tour bus. Long, all decked out, big. The wheels look a bit funky. More like a hovercraft than wheels. This is definitely an all-terrain RV. She pokes her head out and glares at you from the doorway. Allons-y, slowpokes! Does this qualify as an artifact? No, this qualifies as an engineering miracle. And the man just walks around it to looking at this closely with some sort of a professional look. Professional eye to it. Okay. I'm gonna give Demian a, like, there's no, so there's no modifiers in this system and there's no way for me to really reward you as a, as a game master. But um, I want to say that she is more likely to listen to you, so I'll I'll shift your difficulties down. So I'll make your 19 also a 20 for rolls with Zara, because she likes that you like her RV. <laughs> so your critical range just expanded from 20 only to 19 and 20. Oh, man. Yeah, this is definitely, this is her baby. Like, you can tell this is, like, her favorite toy. So you're all inside the RV, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. With a lurch, you're moving. This is like Mary Poppins' bag or the TARDIS. It's bigger on the inside. And whoo boy, are there toys in here. The place you step inside more closely resembles the Bat Cave or an aircraft hangar than a recreational vehicle. You see mechs. Robot suits you can climb inside and pilot. Zara gestures impatiently for you to do so. Everyone, please describe the pilot suit you don and the mech that best catches your eye that you climb into. Well, I think Crud is going to look at the selections for the, the pilot suits, and he's like, he picks the one that looks the most naked. All right. Your mech suit is green because you're green? Yes. Oh, well, absolutely. Everything he has is green. Skin color. <laughs> And describe your mech. And if you want to give the listeners the name of the chassis, I think it's called. Um. Right. Uh, he is picking the brawler with the gladiator pattern. The uh, It is a fighting type mech. Uh, with, with the, the pattern is the entry, entry build. Because, you know, this is uh, technology that he's not very familiar with. He's more of a backwoods type of guy. So this mech looks, you know, pretty standard, like uh, almost like an orc. Oh, wow. Uh, and it has, you know, arms and legs. It's got a uh, missile launcher on the uh, right shoulder. And uh, he's got a uh, arm with a big axe and a articulating arm that can grab stuff. And it is also green. <laughs> that is an awesome mech. And Damian, which mech are you in? 
Demian Smack is uh, like what happens when you take an engineering vehicle, strap off its tracks, put in uh, the legs, and this is it. His mech is uh, chassis is uh, called Scrapper, and his pattern is leaky. It has a big chainsaw arm, which is used for both damaging and salvaging. It has a riveting gun, which can be used to fix other mechs or stuff. And it has a riveting arm uh, to take stuff and put it in somewhere. So basically it's a legged engineering vehicle. With a quirk that its reactor emits a green, yellow, a green glow. I'd say positively glowing. <laughs> and how part of uh, this excess heat is uh, conveyed inside uh, where uh, Dimyan has a samovar placed with a tea. So it can boil water with the excess heat from the reactor. I love the luxury of the samovar. <laughs> it's so cool. You were mecking in style. <laughs> Does it have air conditioning? That way, you know, you don't overheat from your winter, your, your, since you're a winter guy? It's not that much hot inside. It's got good ventilation. But even if it was a heat trap, come on, it's a mech. It's a mech. Dimian is already head over heels for this. <laughs> you're checking out all the buttons on the inside. You're installing your samovar. And Demian, you notice a name tag on your pilot suit. It says, Nimble. Uh, wait a moment. Nimble, you said? Nimble, I said. Does he find, like, a card uh, with uh, Vanya's initials or um, um, black with uh, something like Vanya Voskir written inside? Yes, yes, you do. It's scratched under the seat now that you know where to look for it. God damn it, Vanya! <laughs> you scratched my seat! Let's go now over its resale value. Do you find any other stuff somebody might have left inside? No. Okay, why just take it as a friendly hello? So Demian just uh, does the final checks uh, for his Mac to see if everything, everything is working fine. Everything looks to be working great. Both of your mechs are in tip-top order. Let's see if they end the adventure that way. <laughs> um, there's mechanics that your mechs can explode and overheat and all that. So let's see what happens, Robot Wars. Yeah, that, that's that's why I have an ejection system. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> do you guys have any questions for Zara? Zara, we're uh, here looking for relics. I have no idea what they look like. But apparently the earthquakes have put them up on the surface or some crap like that. Do you know which direction to go? Yes, the earthquakes opened a rift in the ground that exposed some long-buried ancient ruins. When this area was lush and fertile years ago, people lived here, and when they moved away, they left behind their stuff. We are going to the rift and then down it to see what was buried deep down there that is now exposed. I wasn't the only one to think of this idea, though, so we have to hurry. The second person looking in the same spot will miss out. All right, well, uh, as, as you say, Alonzi. <laughs> okay, that is the end of Crud's uh, questions. What are our rules of engagement? There we go. Um, we are simply to not engage would be perfect. Uh, our goal is to get as much treasure as possible. Despite having a mech suit, I'm still only one person. I needed more hands to carry all of the treasures, and I need someone to watch my back. There are things in this rift. Things the earthquake has brought here. Things that are rushing in just like we are, to get newly exposed food sources. I do not want to be their nourishment. Uh, let's say we encounter some less than friendly someone. What are rules of engagement for this encounter? Survive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and get treasure. Okay. No <laughs> questions asked. <laughs> okay, you're both done with questions? I have this whole page of, like, answers for stuff. I think it's interesting that the two groups... Oh, this is a companion episode for the listeners. Um, next week's going to be the same exact adventure, but with different players who haven't heard this one, so they're going to explore it entirely uniquely. It's very cool to see how they explore differently. So they might ask different questions. 
All right. Uh, all right, everyone, from pages 221 to 228 of the Salvage Union rulebook, describe a variety of bays in this crawler, which is named Bastion, and activities you can get up to. I don't want to go too fast and deprive you of your ability to do things here in these bays if you were wanting to. Was there anything you want to do in this crawler, Bastion, before we move on? Not really, I guess. We don't have much to do yet. Right. Yeah, we... We really don't have any scrap yet, so there's not much we can do. Right. So as the story progresses, this is where you will probably come back to. Uh-huh. Okay. So we are going to get started. Bastion, the crawler you are all traveling in, the RV that is bigger on the inside, comes to a stop at the fault line. It clanks and whirs as it cools down, having arrived at the cliff's edge. Imagine standing at the edge of the Grand Canyon. The earth drops away into a deep chasm. Down, down, down. There's no way a humid could climb down there easily at all. Good thing we got Max. I don't want to test if it survives the fall, actually. That's okay, I'll do it. Timian just checks if his rivet gun is working properly. <laughs> but it doesn't seem that a rivet gun would be enough to fix... Uh, and make after this kind of a fall. Well, let's roll to see what happens. There's what's called a core mechanic table, and it's on um, the like list, the summary list of all the tables. So, Crud, why don't you roll a d20 and we'll see how that climbing goes. Uh, 17, so that's pretty, pretty nifty. Success, you have achieved your goal without any compromises. Now in your mech suit, you're very maneuverable. The strong mech hands punch handholds into the rock as if it were fondant. Punch, step, punch, step. It's as easy as walking horizontally thanks to their superior strength. Question. Do you go straight down to the dark recesses, left to a patch of red rock, or right to a patch of gray rock? Rudd, I think, is going straight down. Straight down. Okay. So there is a thing called area salvage in this game. And I have numbers for all of these areas. So the things that I defined there, straight down, left to the patch of red rock, and right to the patch of gray rock. Those are areas, if that makes sense, for area salvaging. So straight down to the dark recesses. You go down, down, down. Um, What's the status of Demion at this point? I guess he just shrugs and follows uh, in the same uh, holes he punched. Yeah. All right. You both are going down, (laughs) down, down. The far wall of the crevice gets closer and closer. Soon the high walls block out the sunlight. It's dark down here in this narrow passage between the two land masses. Illumination from your mech's floodlights sweeps over rocks left and right as you punch create handholds. What do we see? <laughs> Mostly darkness, except where your floodlights are shining. Well, I have dark vision, so I can see better. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> are you looking at a screen or are you looking out through like eye holes? Oh, eye holes, definitely. <laughs> okay. It's like a periscope. Yeah. It, yeah. it, it, it looks and go 360 degrees. Okay, well, are your mech's floodlights even on, then? Oh, probably not. You can see in the dark. Okay. Demian, are your floodlights on? Yes, I don't <laughs> see in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, then the following is for Demian. Demian, you're following along behind Crud. Demian, your mech's floodlights illuminate in sweeps where you're, where you're turning the light. Left and right, up and down, shining on a gray rock there, an orange rock there. Demian, as your floodlight illuminates a gray rock, part of the rock stays black. The floodlight passes on still moving before your mind can register what it saw. What? What? Check. Double check. (laughs) If they sweep the light back on the black. It's an orange rock this time. Wait, no, there it is. Wait, did that move? It's like a little puddle of complete blackness. Very tiny. It could fit in your human pilot's palm. It's solid black like a ferrofluid, and as you look at it, it slowly and gently raises up, moving incredibly slowly. It looks like it's giving you a thumbs up. (laughs) 
Demian just pokes out of his cabin and gives a thumbs up to the puddle. <laughs> it makes the hand gesture like this, like waving. All right. Uh, do you want to talk? <laughs> it makes this hand gesture. Well... For the audience, the hand <laughs> gesture is, I don't know. <laughs> okay, then. Have a nice... Uh, <laughs> Demian just looks around. Day, I suppose. <laughs> And just close us back the hedge. It makes more hand gestures at you. It makes this hand gesture at you. For the audience, the hand gesture is kind of like a wimp la- wave. It's like a cat's paw. Like, come here. Anyway, um, no, I shouldn't say words. <laughs> well, I was already moving somewhere in that direction, so might just as well come closer a little bit. Just uh, one arm, one neck arm from it. Okay. Stand. It uh, continues to wave at you. <laughs> nah, I'm not risking it. <laughs> and Demian just uh, runs uh, to, to catch up with Krut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Yay. Um, Crud, there are shiny rocks down here. And Zara joins you. She's in a mech, too. Um, she is in a cat mech. So uh, she... Points to, um, she rolls an area salvage roll, and she points to some, basically like pottery shards, and she says, Hey, load up your mechs with uh, three scrap each, please, and help me carry them back to the surface. Okay. Articulating arm. (laughs) You both have two tech one scrap. And that fills up one inventory spot. Do you have... How much inventory do you have left? Uh, Well, there is 20 boxes on this character sheet, so 19. Um, I don't think you get all of them when you start. I think that's the max level number. Isn't it the stat named Cargo Cap? Yeah. Mine is six, so I guess I have five more Cargo Capacity. Oh, uh, yeah, mine is six, so I have five more. All right. So now you're carrying two tech one scrap each. Shall we continue down? You're at the bottom. Shall we go up? <laughs> go to the left. Don't you want to explore here? Left? Maybe right? Let's still toss a coin. <laughs> right? Left? You go right, I go left. Uh, oh, do you really want to... Who's gonna patch your mech when you get... When you do some stupid stuff? Nah, I'll just follow you. Whatever. Let's go left. Left! <laughs> Zara follows as you all go left to that patch of red rock. The rock is red here as you enter this cave. It's red and dripping. There's a 15-foot-long uprooted tree in the entrance of the cavern. No, not an uprooted tree. Uprooted trees aren't hairy or dripping. This is a massive insect leg. Looking around, you see pieces of a gigantic, steel-armored, arachnid-like predator beast. It has been ripped apart. For my players, this is a deceased Skyla, page 276 of the rulebook. Now that's some big game hunt. Demian just uh, pours some tea with Melissa to calm down his nerves. That is nasty. Uh, so, uh, Z, is this a, uh, relic? Yes, it is, in a way I can salvage this and trade it for the equivalent of scrap. She starts with a chainsaw (laughs) and starts cutting it up. Oh, (laughs) Timian cranks his chainsaw, too. (laughs) I got missiles, would that help? (laughs) No, it is already dead. You can save your missiles for the things that killed it. Well, people, it looks sort of like this was people. And she looks around the room and she's like, No, the people who are here, they took all of the other scrap from this room. It is an area salvage number of zero for my players, because the other team has been here. But they did not salvage this Skylar. I will retrieve the biosalvage. And from the rulebook, biosalvage can be traded for the equivalent of one tech one scrap. Uh, it cannot be used directly for crafting and repairing. It takes up one cargo slot and can be transported safely. So she starts in with the chainsaw, and you guys... Do you see how many structure points this Skyla has? 
39. <laughs> so that means that this can, in theory, have 39 tech one scrap if you use the trading mechanic in the bay. Hey, boss, need some help uh, cutting it up? Definitely, I cannot carry all of this by myself. Please, help me cut, help me carry. Dimian revs up his chainsaw and joins in the <laughs> cutting. All right, what's your capacity? My capacity is uh, five out of six. You are full. You have the tech one scrap from earlier, and you have the remainder in bio salvage. Okay, I'm full. Do we get back to the surface or venture forth? We are full. We must go back. Crowd, you are with us, or do you want to, I don't know, hang down here for some more time? I think he's frozen, but he'll rejoin us when he rejoins us. It, it happens, so um, it's okay. It's now a solo adventure for a few minutes. Not a big deal. He'll be back. And let's go to the surface and drop this stuff off with Bastion. Okay, let way. Hey, you're back. I'm back. The Skyla had 39 bio salvage, and so you're both now at capacity with bio salvage, and you're taking it back to Bastion. Okay. Let's return to the surface and drop off this load. So there were 39 structure points, and you guys had a capacity of, like, you could carry, like, three that time and then five each time after that. So 39 divided by 15. It's going to take you guys three trips. Do we really need to pick this thing up? Or maybe we should just try and rush forward before the other team beats us to any other more significant artifacts. That is a good point. You're right. And after the first load, so you guys can drop off your five, you know, um, you're talking about this at Bastion, and she says, I see your point. If there is another team here, then we will be missing out on all of the magical artifacts. Just getting scrap. Let's do it. That's what I'm talking <laughs> Let's just drop our stuff here and uh, find something more valuable. Okay, so you guys have deposited five tech one scrap because of trading each at the... Uh, so there's ten tech one scrap in Bastion now, or fifteen because of her. Yeah. So I guess we head back down there and just go further. Do you go down, left to the red rock, or right to the gray rock? We've been left, so I guess we should go right. Hmm. Do you ask Zara any questions or chat, chit chat? Maybe she chit chats with you. Here we go. So she says, I am finding you more reliable than my formal employee, as she says, as you head right. So you're right. Okay, you turn right to head to the patch of grave rock. This rock gives way to a cavern, but it's different than the canyon you came from. That one was the earth splitting and kind of crumbly on the edges. This one is round, like a, a defined shape, round. This is a round tunnel connecting to that naturally formed chasm, you know. Let's go down the tunnel. <laughs> uh, a little way. <laughs> <laughs> you are heading down the tunnel. Tell me, what distance band deep into the tunnel are you? Distant band into the tunnel. Um... Probably just go as far as we can. Maybe we can sk skip the other team and, and get down further to get the juicy bits. Yes, you might have a point. All right. So the four distance band options were close, medium, long, and far. I'm putting you at far. Flash! Something like a lightning bolt, but obviously smaller and underground, happens at the far range, further down the tunnel from where you are. So you guys are at far, far further down. Flash. Ah, I think not there's good. a storm up ahead. Not good, not good. <laughs> so, boss, do we go further or turn back? I don't want to meet something that's making this flashes. Oh, me? Yeah, let's go. Only if you go first. <laughs> Only if you go first. And I'd rather watch you go first from a safe distance. Yeah, that's the way everybody else does it too. Let's go! <laughs> Crud and Crud's mech are approaching, and uh, Demion and Demion's mech are staying at the far distance from this lightning thing, right? Okay. Yes. There are four distance things. Far, long, medium, and close. 
By the time you get to long, crud, flash, crackle, lightning sizzles from that distance, racing down the tunnel towards you. A ball of bluish white light crackles, hisses, and pops, sizzling rapidly across the surface of a titanic metal scaled electric eel with a dragon head. Everyone, select one person in the party to be in charge of rolling initiative. I suppose Groot, since he's already there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm pulling up that initiative table. Can you please roll a d20? Absolutely. 16. Uh, yeah, so around, I'm looking at the group initiative table, and what's your d20 number? 16. Si oh, 16. Got it. I thought you said succeed. Oh, my gosh. All right, 16. Oh. <laughs> Yes, I automatically succeed on everything. You win. <laughs> so it says quick draw. One pilot chosen by the players acts first. Play then passes to the NPC group and one NPC chosen by the mediator acts. Okay. So that means that it's going to be crud, then the enemy thing, lightning snake, then uh, Demion, then the enemy snake. <laughs> That's how... We're going to do initiative. And initiative changes each turn in this game. So that's the next four actions, and then we'll re-roll. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And Zara's there, too. So it's going to be Crud, the enemy snake, Demion, the enemy snake, Zara, the enemy snake. Okay. Got it. Crud, you are first. You are at the long distance from this thing. It is crackling and sizzling with electricity. Like an electric eel meets a metal snake. Okay, well, I have two weapons. I have my steel axe, and I have my missile pod. I have to be close for my my steel axe, but long for my missiles is fine. So I'm going to fire a missile at this thing. All right, roll a d20. Wow, that's a 19. A 19 is a success. You have achieved your goal without any compromising. Yay! When attacking, you hit the target and you deal your standard damage. What is your damage? The damage is 8 SP. It has explosive 2. And I need to mark off a heat. Oh, it costs a heat to use that. It does. Your heat capacity is probably like around 3-ish, right? What's your heat capacity? 14. Oh, nice. Right, right. The higher level mech. Okay, so you dealt eight structure point damage? Yes. Okay, what's the explosion two thing? I need to look that up. I'm not exactly sure. All right, we'll, we'll deal with that in a future turn. Okay, I have noted. Uh, describe what that looks like. Well, all of a sudden, for the, uh, the people behind me, they just see a plume of smoke shoot out. Uh, it goes down a tailpipe, and it looks like he's, his mech is farting. And uh, the missile just zoom, strikes this thing and explodes. Right on its big old scaly snake face. It has like a dragon snake head thing. It's got a long snake body. This is its tunnel. Okay. Electro Forest takes a titanic action. Only one titanic action may be chosen at a time and only at the end of another pilot's turn. Electro Forest makes a... Uh, Electroforce moves one range band. So it is now medium to crud and still far from Demion. And I'm going to put Zara with you, Demion. She'll get close if you get close. Now it is Electroforce's turn. Electroforce can move once per turn. So it gets from medium to close, which is melee range. I'm going to put it at the... Uh, long distance from Demion and Zara. And then being at the medium range, no wait, close? Wait, yeah, it says close. Wait, am I at close with you or, wait, hold on. Wait, it was it? Long, it moved closer to medium on your turn and now it's, okay, got it. Now it's at close on its turn. Okay, now it can make an electrified spines attack. Electroforest gouges a target with its electric spines. So it, um. Yeah, it it does eight structure points to you if it succeeds on this roll. That's not nice. No, it's not nice. It's a giant electric snake thing. And that was an 18 on the dice. So that is a success with no compromises. Okay. 
So I take eight SP. Yeah. How many do you have left? All right. Okay. I know who's going to win this fight. After that Electro Forest's turn, Demian, it's your turn. I guess I should move closer. Or I have his close range, so I just rush to fix this uh, ugly hole that the snake made. Move me closer to Krat. How many distance bands can you move in this system? Okay, where do I look it up? Well, I've got the basic locomotion system installed, I guess. How how far does it move me? Uh, okay, so I'm going to say that because you don't have the charge action, right? Charge says that you can movement. On their turn, a mech, pilot, vehicle, or creature can move one range band. They may move before or after they have taken their action. Okay, move me one range band closer to crowd. You were at long, so now you are at me- now you are at medium. Okay, so I can still do some action, right? Yes. So I'm gonna use the personal recreation device installed. So the next time I do a check, I might reroll the die. <laughs> nice. All right. Is that the end of your actions? Yes. At the end of your turn, there's a titanic action. Electrophorus is close to Crud and medium distance from Demyon. Electrophorus uses a makes a bioelectric arc attack. Electrophorus fires an arc of bioelectricity. Choose up to three targets in medium range and make a single attack roll. On a successful hit, the first target takes ten structure points damage, the second target takes five structure points damage, and the third target takes three structure points damage. And this is at range medium, so I can definitely hit both of you guys. That is a 14. Looking at that table, 14 is a success with no complications. So that means that... uh, How are you guys feeling as Crud just took 10 structure points of damage and Demian took 5? Well, that's effectively half of my structure points. This massive... Massive electro forest bio titan roars and it's like basically like a dragon that feels your whole field of view in the entire tunnel. Alrighty, my mech is feeling not good, not good. Alright, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Alright. You you just took ten points of damage. Congratulations. Another ten? Yes. The bio titan is a huge electric dragon snake eel thing in this tunnel. That perfectly matches its size and shape. And uh, you guys are getting your butts handed to you. All right. Well, uh, I'm not the most intelligent being, but even I can see a we need to get out of here. Run. He fires off another missile and runs backwards. (laughs) You guys are taking the flea option. Okay. So Zara, then she goes, even with two people this time. I am not able to overcome these bio-titans. My teams, I'm sorry I failed you as your employer. I should have uh, gotten better max, you know, but this is a problem as uh, the person who is second gets no treasures. So I am perhaps not the most able to employ you guys at the highest tech level and, and salary. I'm sorry. And she basically, like, if you're watching for your end, there's this earth golem bottle that you can shatter, and it, it's like an escape rope. There we go. In Pokemon. And it takes you out of the dungeon, and she hits a button on the mechs, and they all have, like, Wi-Fi, and they signal to one another. And she's like, quickly, we escape! And they all put on their turbo rockets, and you guys are, like, jetting out of that hole. Like, turbo rocketing out of that hole. Your mechs have a flea mode. I'm not going to make you die here, but Bio-Titans are strong and powerful. And uh, as first-time adventurers, you're not able to take this one down. So you successfully flee triggered your flea option you are at the end of the tunnel where it reaches the canyon the electric snake chases behind you the electricity sizzling and crackling along its face and body and it is right behind you as you exit this tunnel what are you doing well first crud's gonna yell you knew about this and you couldn't warn us what is wrong with you I did warn you. I said we are not the only people here, and we just found a dead one of these. You knew that they existed. Yeah, but you uh, just said your last party failed at killing this one. Not at this one, but just in general. I found it to be a not the best um, 
I, okay, I, I have a history and you have not asked about it at all, but it, <laughs> thanks for caring. <laughs> but yes, there uh, are giant monsters down here and there are other people here and the other team can kill these things. Um, cough. I was hoping that you could. Uh, we run into the mech or into the, uh, uh, the carrier. Okay. <laughs> you are back, back in the carrier. Uh, it's called, um, a crawler. You're back at Bastion. Okay. Okay, I believe we had a repair bay on our crawler, so we should probably get two repairs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Repair bay. All right, I'm flipping a page. Is that 223? Repair bay. Page 228. Restore your mech and pilot. Your mech structure points and energy are fully restored during downtime. Your mech's heat also reduces to zero. Note this down on your mech sheets. If... Any mech chassis systems or modules are damaged. They are repaired to the intact condition during downtime as long as they are of a tech level equal to or lower than your union crawler. Yep. During downtime, your pilot heals their HP and ability points to full. If you have access to a higher tech level med bay, your minor and major injuries can heal as well. Note this down on your pilot sheet. Yes. So being in Bastion, you're able to repair your mech. And you guys didn't use any of your abilities, but your ability points would be restored to full. And you didn't take any damage to your systems because you got out of there right away. That is also not a problem. You are restored to full. I suppose Demian was the one tinkering with the mechs, so he just crawls out of under crew's mech. Just uh, swaps out the sweat from his uh, forehead and just exclaims, Man, that was one hell of a nasty snake. Just look, look at the size of the hole. Now covered with this crude patch. Man. Yep. Now what? Well, we, obviously... we, still, we still have uh, work to do, I guess. We can't take these things down. The other team can. Do we just... Oh, let's stalk them and steal their stuff. That's one way to put it. Let's just say permanently borrow. We can hunt down there. They're... Uh, they're... They're... Uh, their crawler, and just, you know, take whatever they got out of that. I don't think we could take down a crawler by just the two of us. Well, if they're down in the in the, in, in the thing, all they got is an NPC in there waiting for us. Maybe, maybe their NPC's down there with them, too. It might be empty. Hmm. We need to scout it out first, anyway. Okay. By the way, the man just turns to his employer. You mentioned uh, all the way the previous team and its failures. Could you tell me more about your previous team? It was one person. I hired them. They assured me there would be enough. They will not. The man just points at uh, the call sign on the pilot suit he found earlier. <laughs> his call sign? <laughs> Oh, she looks at the name tag and scowls. He was the person who worked for me before I hired you. You can throw that out. Just tell me uh, how exactly did you hire him? <laughs> and uh, what happened to him? I hired him through a jump world. And she narrows her eyes and phrases her words a few times before saying, he is much wealthier than he would ever have gotten working for me currently. That uh, is what happened to if we know where he failed, we might not make the same mistakes as he did. Maybe not encounter such beasts like that one we just encountered. If only we knew. <laughs> well, the goal is, we are down there and we see an area that nobody has explored. And we go in it and we find relics. Relics. Treasure. I think we can do this. We just need to stay away from the Bio-Titans. And... Don't meet the other teams, they will beat us up <laughs> and take all of our stuff. We might just borrow some of the relics they have already found. I guess yeah. Crude has a plan for this. <laughs> <laughs> we robbed their crawler. Let's say expropriate the expropriator. What he said. <laughs> oh, I am, I am not sure they have a crawler. I, am, I made this one myself. Her name is Bastion. Do you like her? Tibian just looks at her with puppy eyes. 
Yeah, so she made Bastion. There's no guarantee the other group has a crawler. Well, so what? I so, guess so. we'll just follow in their wake and steal whatever they might have left, dropped, hidden, whatever. Oh, I forgot. I forgot something. As she's patting Bastion, rubbing her hands on the metal, she says, ah, It is not as beautiful as my best creation, Citadel. What's that? Citadel. Do you have a photo? <sighs> oh, I do. She shows you a photo. It's like a traveling castle. Oh, that's, that's... I wish I could see it one day. But Citadel is no more, and we have Bastion. But I am pretty sure I am the only one who makes these things. But anyway, yes, the plan is uh, get stuff however we can. I'm open to opportunities. If you seize them, I'll seize them with you. If you see them, I'll seize them with you. <laughs> okay. We still plan to expropriate the expropriated, but not from the crawler, but probably from the other crew themselves. That would be wonderful revenge. I miss Citadel. I miss her so much. Wait, did they do this to you? Uh, it's too painful to talk about. Let's go back to the ravine. Okay, off for revenge. Off we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go steal their stuff. <laughs> All right, you guys, where are you going? I guess back down, but... Back to the ravine, where we are going to track them down and steal their stuff. You are at the edge of basically the Grand Canyon. Describe what you do. We, we find our footholds that we had used before and descend. You are descending. As you cling to the... You're like... Poking a fondant-covered cake, right? You make little dimples in it, and you can put your hands in there, and you're easily climbing down this rock wall. Far above you, you hear the distant sound of rock falling. It sounds like pitter-patters. Uh, above us or below? Above you. Uh, I think there's somebody up there. Wait, where? Where? <laughs> uh. As Demion looks around, as Crud points up, there's a large jolt forward. Rocks are falling all around you. The ground continues to shake violently. It's difficult to remain clinging to the wall. Everyone, what are you doing to prevent yourself from falling off this side of the canyon? Oh. Ah. Uh, oh, the articulating rig arm just goes straight into the rock, grabs the rock, and just holds on for dear light. All right, roll a d20. Of course. That's a two. Oh, ho, ho, ho. A That's two. going into jail. <laughs> Dice jail. <laughs> a two on the core mechanic table says, Failure. You have failed at what you were attempting to do. You face a setback of the mediator's choice. I am going to go to the setback table. Basically, there are environmental changes, uh, mech changes, and it's my choice. So normally I would present two to you. Like I would be like, option one, your rigging arm gets busted if it normally would cost two energy to use it now costs four energy to use you know or option mm -hmm. two the environment changes you plummet off the edge of the cliff down 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 into the ravine depths you know but since it's my choice i choose and i think it makes i don't want to damage your rigging arm i want you to fall off so you fall off <laughs> yep. you are you're you're falling demion what are you doing to hold on also the same uh, use every hand and every limb I have to put it deeper in the holes. Like a rigging arm goes in one hole, chainsaw arm goes in the other hole, chair revving up, uh, digging even further. And just hold on for your dear life. And uh, of course it's uh, eight. Yes, I fall too. We suck at earthquakes. An eight is a tough choice. You succeed in your action, so you do hang on, but at a cost. The mediator gives you a tough choice with some kind of setback attached. So if you were attacking, you would still hit. So if you are trying to cling onto the rock wall, you do successfully cling onto the rock wall. But here's the choice. You have to choose. Either. Oh, wait. Does my buff from the time I drank some tea still hold on? Oh, yeah. What was that exactly you get? I get a reroll. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, if you want to use that now, yeah. Another dice. And it's 18. Well, that's quite different. <laughs> oh, and there's also the push mechanic. Um, just that, don't, like, not now, but just in general, you guys. You can push your mech to re-roll dice, and it adds heat to your unit. Don't forget that. 
Yeah, I did forget that. I should have did that. <laughs> That's okay. I like that you <laughs> fell. Um, so, so uh, because you are role play this, how, what, how are you like re-rolling in game? Like describe the situation. Your hands are <laughs> clinging, but a rock is coming at your face. And... Demian just decides that it's not the perfect time to preserve uh, the sharpness of uh, the chainsaw and just uh, revs it even faster and digs it in the wall. Yeah, and maybe that chainsaw pulls you along a little bit, jerks you out of the way of the rock you didn't see coming, and accidentally saves you. Whoa. Uh, Zara definitely goes, whoa, <laughs> like in her cat mech. The cat has claws and it's clinging to the rock wall. I want to go uh, with crud for a little bit so let's let's change settings we are now falling but we're falling in basically like an airbag insulated giant metal orc body it's not just crud it's crud in mech so no surprise yeah crud doesn't know that though he's yeah he's screaming the entire way down <laughs> oh no. You're screaming in, in panic and terror. You're freaking out. And you know what happens is um sort of like a spider web, but it's completely black, is at the very bottom of the ravine, and your mech body crashes into that spider web, ripping and tearing it to shreds. The black uh bursts apart and it's in like little splotches everywhere. You know, you spl you splatter explode that spider web, you know. But it, it super slowed you down, and it was like an airbag, and you you gently sat down on the bottom of the ravine. Well, that was lucky. Uh, he looks around. You see, with your dark vision, um, complete blackness in spots, and the complete blackness is like a little puddle, and it raises up a little fingerhead. <laughs> Crud mimics it. <laughs> when you turn, it turns. Crud does a little dance. It does a little dance. All right, I like you. <laughs> Crud well, puts a finger out right at it to see if it would touch fingers with him. <laughs> the black pharaoh fluid ooze gently reaches out to you too, very slowly, like E.T. touch finger. It slowly sinks into the metal of the mech and makes a little smiley face on the tip of your finger. Uh, Crud uses his comm system. We have those. Yeah. And says... Damien, I found something so cool! I'm coming sometime soon. <laughs> and Damien just starts crawling his way down. And just uh, rushes as fast as he can to get to Cruz. And probably not fall off again. <laughs> yeah, you don't. And Zara's with you too. She says, Eh, what is that? New friends! <laughs> oh. Look, look, I do a little dance. It does a little dance. He does a little jig. It does a little jig. And Zara's looking around in complete horror at all of the black splotches all around you. Because at the bottom of this ravine, there's lots of these like ferrofluid black ooze puddles that are dancing in tune with crud. <laughs> ah, friend! Jimian just sticks out his uh, thumb again. <laughs> it sticks out a thumb. <laughs> yeah, we've already met. Yes. <laughs> Zara uh. says... It would make you think that this weird, creepy alien life form is your friend. What? <laughs> Come on, he's cute. Can we keep him? Can we keep him, please? <laughs> no, don't touch it. It's creepy. <laughs> I already did. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Crud holds up his hand, and there's like a smiley face of ferro fluid on his finger, and it definitely can sink right into that metal. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else down here? Uh, yes. So I'm going to say, Crud, you now have a passenger, but roll, I'm just curious, just roll a dice. Does Zara get a passenger too? I want Crud to roll for that. Okay. Now I'm wondering if I should take the one out of jail because I'm rolling for her or, nah, I'll leave that in jail. 15. A 15 is a success. Zara is like, I see that you are not consumed by this alien life form and it's definitely much tinier than the bio titan. I am not afraid of it. I have a cat, Mac. Yes, I, I will befriend it, too. She reaches out a paw, and the little black thing, like, oozes onto her paw, and she's like, 
<laughs> and then it sinks right into the metal and she's like what where did it go where did it go and then it pops out into her like pilot bay inside she's like ah it's in my pilot bay i don't know why you're panicking these things are cool uh, you stay in the corner <laughs> <laughs> oh don't be so harsh to him he's a nice guy <laughs> she looks at it suspiciously <laughs> Don't worry, he doesn't bite much. <laughs> the dust falls on your head and like little bits of rock fall on your head because you're at the bottom of this crevice after an earthquake. You fell down here first and then now there's a bunch of dust. And uh, Zara looks up and she points and she goes, Look, was that cell before? She's pointing across the way where before you was simply the wall of earth stratified into sedimental layers. That rock slide has happened, and now you see an opening, a dark hole in the earth. Nope, let's go! Uh, I'll just follow him. A new area! Maybe it is treasure! Maybe, but if we see a big mechanical-looking piece of ouchies, we leave. <laughs> Agreed. Let's go! <laughs> and with that, I'm going to take us on a break. Joining us for part one, we're Crud. I got a new friend. <laughs> and Damian. That friend is cute. <laughs> um, we don't have a review today, uh, or we would read it to you. And we would be... Uh, we don't really have any new reviews now, and we would be really grateful if you have you leave us a review on iTunes. And we'll read it on air. Yeah. Please leave us a review. All right. Bye. Bye. See you. Today's mid-episode shout out is, quote, heartfelt appreciation to my partner, Diego, for your support through the birth of our little Rylena. You complete me in every way. End quote. Aw, that's a nice one. Thank you for supporting our podcast by buying a shout out. Everyone, you can arrange for us to read your shout out at firebreathingkittenspodcast.com. We also have paperback, hardcover, and audiobook adaptations of our adventures on Amazon and Audible. Or, if you'd like, think of someone you know who might enjoy Fire Breathing Kittens and tell them about our podcast. That would really help us. Thank you. Welcome back to Fire Breathing Kittens. For this episode, a Salvage Union actual play podcast. Everybody, can you roll a d20? Right smack in the middle, 10. 10. Okay, roll it again. <laughs> Uh, 19. Uh, three. A 19 is high. Can you please tell us what happened in the first half? But I succeeded and he failed. Yeah, you get to do it. Okay. Well, in the first half, we introduced ourselves. Then we described our mechs. And we got a description of the crawler. And we're on a job to salvage relics. From the desert that just had a, uh, you know, when the earth moved, earthquake, that's the words I'm looking for, because apparently words are hard today. Um, so we went out there, met uh, Zora, the explorer, and uh, got on her little, her little pride of joy called Bastion. And she took us over to this little crack in the earth, this ravine that was kind of described as Grand Canyon-esque. And uh, we went down there. We went all the way down, explored a little, got a little bit of scrap, not much. Then we went to the left. There was a dead bug thing. And so harvesting it, harvesting it, harvesting it. Okay, you know what, guys? There's other people down here. We need to keep moving. So stopped the harvesting there, went down another one, found a lightning eel, got our butts handed to us. We ran out of there really, really fast, got repaired, went back down, crud fell. Damien didn't. He was like, ah, ha, 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 ha. But crud made a new friend. Little uh, slime things, little happy face on his finger now. And um, there was another earthquake. That's why crud fell. And now there's a new portion at the very bottom where we are about to explore. I think that's pretty much it. Yep. That's it. Good job. Yay, me! 
The dust clears. Zara points up. Across the way, where before you was simply the wall of earth, stratified into sedimental layers, a rock slide has happened, and now you see an opening, a dark hole in the earth. Let's go! Let's go! Oh, you, if you need to use the potty, it's right back there. Mm-hmm. Well, it's just the way you said that, it sounded like you are constipated. <clears throat> No, no. No constipation. Let's just go. Let's just finish this task and get our money. Let's do it. Do it. Describe what you do. I guess uh, we march to the opening. It is up a rock wall. Climb time. Not again. Hanging on is where he uh, Crud is not very good at, but climbing and descending he's good at. 13. A 13 is a success. Yay! Damien, are you going to... Climb up here with me. You got to roll. Uh, 18. <sighs> and 18 is also a success. You guys climb with no problems. And following in her cat mech, so does Zara. The moment you enter this crevice, the air being pumped into your mech suits by tiny fans smells different. This dry, stagnant air hits your face, propelled by fans, and you can smell in the air how long... This area has been undisturbed a very long time. This is a long rectangular room. Colorful, embedded geometric designs decorate the walls. Two thrones sit on a dais in the middle of the room. Zara raises a fist in the air, triumphant, her cat mech doing like a high five. Yes, an undisturbed ancient ruin! Her cat mech leaps and bounds, cat running towards the throne. I say we hang back here and see if she trips something. Nah, just let's uh, explore it as quickly as we can. And Demian just goes to the other side of the tomb. Demian goes to the other side of the tomb. Crud is hanging back. Crud, your black pharaoh fluid puddle raises a round blob up out of the puddle and directs it left and right to the ceiling and the throne. Hey, puddle friend, uh, I'm going to call you Gooey. So, Gooey, uh, are you saying go to the throne? Or are you saying if somebody sits on the throne, the ceiling's going to fall in? Thumbs up for yes, thumbs down for no. It wibble wobbles. <laughs> uh, you're not sure. That seemed like a shrug. Um, okay, let's, I'm going to the throne. <laughs> Demian is heading across the room. Demian, there is a treasure chest, like a storage dressers, right? But for old timeys, they just store their stuff in here. But for us, it's a treasure chest. Let's just check if it looks suspiciously trapped. Make a roll. That's an 18 again. What a good dice. With an 18, you inspect it and you see you can look between the drawer and uh, the catch and there's just space between there. There's no like hidden dart. <laughs> Nothing's gonna... Oh, and you're in a mech suit too. So you're not too worried. You feel confident that you're able to get this open. Okay. I use my extendable arm. Just pull the drawer. As you open it, gold light reflects off of your face like in a movie. This is full of gold, jewels, magical amulets, relics, scrolls, and all sorts of goodies. You start thinking about how much you can carry. And then for Crud, who is heading near the throne. Mm. Yeah. Crud. Yes. I'm excited. Come on. Zara points to a scepter leaning across one of the thrones, a tall gold stick with a ball jewel at the top. That is very obviously cursed. Don't touch it. We don't have time. The earthquake, it will have been sensed. Azals are on their way. So that's cursed. Can I like put a rag around it and touch it? Or we can remove the curse later, right? As long as we don't actually physically touch it. It's your life. I'm not going near that thing. And Zara heads over to sort of like Demian, one of the boxes full of gold and relics and scrolls with magic. Hey, Gooey, is that scepter good to go to touch? Thumbs up for yes, thumbs down for no. Gooey's like oonsing, like boons, 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 and just like doing a little dance. It's just a happy little Gooey. Gooey's like, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously, Gooey is not a source of information. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me see what I might have. I want the scepter. 
I don't want to be cursed. <laughs> <laughs> Demian, let's talk about your cargo capacity. It's uh, six. Yeah. And now it's empty since we dropped all stuff back at the crawler, so six capacity. All right. What do you describe the treasure that you're filling in your inventory? You know, before uh, stuffing uh, the max uh, capacity, Demian just walks outside and uh, fills up coins, you know, with his pockets and pants. And since he's had, uh, he has a lot of them, that's a lot of uh, valuable and not so stuff in, he in his pockets. And only after that, he returns back to Mac and just uh, grabs uh, the whole drawer and pours all the stuff inside his uh, trunk. Nice. Zara looks incredibly happy. She's packing her cat mech full of gold and like there's a diamond necklace and a crown. Yeah. And when the capacity is reached, like up to the brim, Dimian walks out of the mech, climbs on the top of it, and uses his leg to stomp it to, cap to press it more compactly. <laughs> so a few more coins could be <laughs> thrown inside. And only after that he finds that it can't go any further and it's really full to the brim, to the brimest. He just returns uh, inside his uh, mech and uh, pours another cup of tea. <laughs> the luxury <laughs> of having tea. <laughs> nice. And he holds uh, the cup with his uh, pinky pointing out like some kind of royalty <laughs> and his legs on the dashboard. <laughs> nice. Well, Crud has realized that he doesn't actually have to touch it. Just the mech. So if the mech gets cursed, so what? It's not his anyway. So he uses the articulated arm and grabs the scepter. Oh, yeah. The articulated arm is like specially designed to pick up human-sized things, right? Yep. Without that, you couldn't have picked it up with your mech. Okay. Yeah. You have the scepter. Does anything happen? <laughs> Nothing happened. Oh, he puts it in the cargo bay. It's in the cargo bay. And then he goes and joins the other two. It's just... Fills up the cargo, rest of the cargo with jewels and relics and stuff. You are maximally capacitated of jewels and relics and stuff. Zara's like, excellent. Now that we have this, quickly, we will return to Bastion before anybody else gets here. Yeah, it's never that easy, but let's try anyway. Let's move. Move fast, as fast as we can. Okay, and do you guys want to area salvage? Sure. I know I saw a chart for that. Aren't we already full to the capacity? Salvaging area salvage table and mech salvage table. So uh, you want us to, to roll on the salvaging table? Yes, it's on page 245, and it's also on that like summary table list. On 341, yep. All right, so that's going to be a 17. It's winning. You find three scrap of the tech level of the area. Which is level six. So, three level six scraps. Yeah. Damian, do you want to roll on the area salvage table? Wait, do you do you have a thing that can do salvaging? Because area salvaging is... um. I think the articulated arm has salvaging on it. Yeah, it does. Damian, do you have the ability to salvage? Area salvage yes. requires the uh, yes. salvaging trait. You salvage an area for scrap. This could be an abandoned factory, a ruined settlement, or a crumbling research facility. The mediator will tell you if an area can be area salvaged or not. It, calls, it costs one AP for a pilot or one EP in a mech. Please make sure you do spend your energy point. Crud. Yes. I have okay. it. I have 10 energy points, which puts me down to nine. Okay. And that is a long action, so it's taking you a while. Demian, are you able to salvage? You said yes. Yes, I am able. Okay. Well, why not give it a try? I doubt. Ah, six. Nothing. Oh, to scrap. You find two scrap. Tech level six. Uh, so, yeah. It says not bad. You, you got the not bad roll. Congratulations. Okay. That was not bad. Okay. Uh -huh. I thought it was so low before I looked into the table. Okay. Still better than nothing. And now that we are full, we should probably hurry up to the surface. Alonze, as our friend says. <laughs> <clears throat> You guys make it to Bastion. You climb up that 
cliff wall, and you look, and your RV is still there. All right. Lucky. That means the other shoe's going to drop somewhere else. <laughs> there is a crafting bay on page 222. Do you guys want to do any crafting? Mm. How much scrap do we have? I'd say not really. It's a one shot after all. We don't have much to do here. Okay, with this I, mean, next I, I encourage you to play the mechanics of the system that we're playing. You've got s some tech one scrap and you've also got... You have two tech two scrap. So is there any like tech six modular system that you had an eye on? I didn't look this high. I thought we were just tech one or two. All right, well, give it a look, and I'll read that crafting mechanic for the listeners in the meantime. Crafting Bay. A crafting bay allows you to craft any mech chassis, system, or module of the tech level of your Union Crawler, which is a level 6 Union Crawler or lower. For example, if you have a tech 2 Union... Oh, and you can use your tech 6 to craft any level. So if, if there's something you had your eye on that was tech 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, your tech 6 scrap can be used for that. To craft a mech chassis system or module, you must spend an amount of scrap equal to its salvage value. This scrap must be of a tech level equal to or higher than the tech level of the mech chassis system or module, for example. To craft a tech 2 blue mining laser system, which has a scrap value of five, or a salvage value of 5, you would spend 5 tech 2 scrap. So scrap is sort of like the coins that you're spending, and salvage value is like the purchasing cost. Welcome back, Crud. We are doing crafting. You guys have three for crud and two for demion tech six scrap, which can be spent for any level of tech. So if you had like a tech two module you had your eye on, you can afford it. And you also had that five or six tech one scrap. Right. Well, I still think the other shoe is going to drop real, real bad. So, uh, so I have five or six tech one. And how many tech two? You have five tech one and crud has three tech six scrap. Remember you just salvaged it from that area salvage? Right. right. Okay. See, I was just going to do a, uh, a, a, a machine gun, but since I got tech six. I'm thinking about automatic machine gun turret, which is on tech level four and costs two scraps. You can go with a green laser automatic turret. If you have three scraps of tech six. I like uh, it's 178. Nice. Page 178. Automated weapon turret. Yeah, go ahead and read that. This system allows you to mount an AI-controlled automated weapon turret onto your mech. The turret understands and follows basic commands you give it, such as attacking a target or defending an area. The turret acts independently of you in the turn order and may attack once per turn. This does not take up your turn action, and the turret may not push, so they don't get advantage, unfortunately. Crafting the system, you may choose the following turret types. Additionally, roll on the AI personality table for your automated turret system to run its personality. So, yes, I'm <laughs> going to get the automated weapon turret. I'm going to use up my tech six to get this. So I get to choose from automated machine gun, automated green laser, or automated 122 millimeter cannon turret. Um, I'm going with the automated 120 millimeter cannon turret. Nice. Do you have four scraps of appropriate tech level to do so? Oh, that was four? Well, you I have... see the this... tech value. Right, this is a tech value of... Oh, this is a tech one. And I have three tech six. You see, the tech value is written, uh, salvage value is written uh, in the cog symbol. The 120 mil cannon is uh, four. Right. Four uh, is... scraps of tech level four. Zara looks at you and she says, You know, I I feel a little bit bad that uh, perhaps you... you're. I see you're wanting the automatic machine gun turret there. And how about this? In exchange for... I notice your friend Demian has uh, done above and beyond, carried extra gold out of there in his own pockets. You know, for being such a head worker, in exchange for all of that gold, I will give you one of my tech six scrap. What do you say? Timian just looks at her with puppy eyes to each. I could also use one tech six scrap. <laughs> okay, I will give you... It's a good bargain you have. I can't use this scrap, really. In exchange for your gold, yes, I will give you 
two tech six scrap each. That's all I have, though. But okay. it would take all of your gold. Timian just uh, pops out uh, all of gold from his pockets, probably <laughs> with some wires uh, that got uh, caught inside between the gold coins, probably with some duct tape. Oh, just <laughs> the contents of his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And describe what you build. Uh, she gave how many tech six scraps to us again? Two each. Two each. Okay. <laughs> I'm building uh, the cannon. <laughs> Fred will give you the extra because he only needs four. I'm building the automated 120 millimeter cannon since now I now have four. All right, and roll for your AI personality, both of you guys. Sounds like you're both buying this. Oh, what, what page is the AI personality on? Damian? Mm, what's the page really for the automated personality? Page 91. 91? 91. 91. 91. Oh my goodness, these are some fun personalities. I'm going to read you guys some. <laughs> personality 1, megalomaniacal to a fault. Personality 2, asks far too many questions. Personality three, views humans as lost puppies to protect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love personality 13, gloomy and miserable. Like That's my favorite. Guide. <laughs> <laughs> you can just pick your favorite one. You don't have to roll. These are great. <laughs> well, I rolled a four and I'm going to stick with that one. Sees humans <laughs> as dull-witted meat to conquer. <laughs> oh my gosh. And my is going to be gloomy and miserable since I wrote 13. <laughs> okay. All right. Now you have AI directed turrets. And how much structure points does this do per turn? I'm just curious. And does it have like hit points that it does it have its own structure points or is it it's part of your mech? So it doesn't. It does right. not have structure points. Right. Okay. So your mech's structure points are all that you've got. Okay. It does have explosion one, which means that's the splash damage. Anybody around it in close proximity gets one point of damage and also has ballistic. And I'm looking that up now. Oh, that's just 18. a weapon that flies through the air. Okay, I'm looking at the automated weapon turret on page 178. Yeah, it does. Okay, it does two structure points. Or oh, it does? Six. Are you going with the cannon turret? The cannon turret. Six structure points. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> no, that's the damage. Yeah. Six structure points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does six. It's like health hit points, but to structures, structure points of damage. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Okay, so you guys have definitely leveled up your weapons for sure. <laughs> revenge, revenge, revenge. Okay. Let's go kill the eel. Round two. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> now that we got these guys, let's go kill that stupid eel. Timian just uh, hugs his turret. Oh, it's so great. It's, it's so nice. I like it. I already like it. What did you say? Let's go use these guns on that eel. <laughs> Shouldn't we ask our consent from them? I mean, the AI. Uh, they must have some sort of consciousness. But yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, your AI is gloomy, right? So your AI is, AI is like, might as well, death is coming anyway. And then your AI sees people as meat to exploit and is like, yes, direct me to the thing that will kill you. Let's go. Our death will be glorious. <laughs> okay. All right. Describe where you're going. Well, we know exactly where it is, so we're just going to retrace our steps down to that thing. Tunnel. Tunnel with an electric wheel. Okay, so you walk to the edge of the Grand Canyon. You use the handholds that you poked before in the rock. You turn right to the gray rock. You turn right, and this rock gives way to a cavern. It's different than the canyon you came from. It's round. This is a round tunnel, shaped like a snake <laughs> or a worm. What distance band deep in the tunnel are you? Long. We want to keep us on long distance from whatever comes our way. <laughs> Zara is at the same location that you guys are, long distance, into the tunnel. So you've gone quite a far ways into it then, Demian? Hmm? You're going into the tunnel? 
or are you like yes, how? Yes, okay. I'm going into the tunnel, but I try to stick as far as possible from any danger that comes our way forward. Got it. So you are far distance. And Crud will be two distance bands away from you, okay? Okay. Okay. Flash! Something like a lightning bolt, but obviously smaller and underground, happens at the far range, further down the tunnel. Crud sees it again, and knows it. (laughs) The black ferro fluid that's on you, Crud, shrinks away. Um, it, like, prickles like needles, and it flees the electricity, diving away from the surface of the mech, flowing through the metal, and emerging into the pilot's cockpit with you. It's shaking, trembling, and it comes to a rest near you, where the trembling gets less intense. He, Crud embraces it, says, it's okay, little buddy. I'm gonna take care of this. (laughs) Flash! Crackle! Lightning sizzles from the distance, racing down the tunnel walls to you. A ball of bluish-white lightning is at the far distance. It crackles, hisses, and pops, sizzling rapidly across the surface of... A titanic metal-scaled electric eel with a dragon head! Everybody, pick one person to roll initiative for the party. You wrote good ones last time, so I'll give the honors to you. (laughs) Alright, 17. I am looking at the initiative table, and it is saying that with a 17... One pilot chosen by the players acts first, play then passes to the NPC group, and one NPC chosen by the mediator acts. Who acts first for your group? I got missiles. I will. <laughs> Is that okay with Demyon? Yes, okay. Shoot it. Shoot it dead. <laughs> <laughs> what distance do your missiles activate at? I'll start the battle with that distance. Long. Okay. You're at long distance, which is closer than far, and that means that Demian is at far. Describe your missile attack. Just like earlier, he fires off a missile. The smoke is rerouted to the tail portion, and so it looks like a big old fart. And it streaks to the 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 the, the thing, and I roll an eighteen to hit the thing. You hit with no complications. So that's going to be eight SP of damage. That's going to be one heat to me. So that brings me down to 13. And uh, it's got two damage to anything else around it in close proximity. Ooh, that damages the length of it. So, like, the the missile like, explodes on the face, and the explosion skids along the length of the snake and, and continues to damage it. It goes down two more structure points. Yay! And I'm going to take off two from before now that we know what we're doing. Okay. okay. And uh, my my cannon will act on its own turn. On its own turn. Now, you do know that every extra turn that you add to this combat, it gets what's called a titanic action. So the more turns for your party, the more times it can attack you. Well, I mean, if you'll let it, if you'll let it act on my turn, yes, then it's part I, of your I will mech. do that. Yeah, yeah, it okay. should. All right. Um, but so, I'm going to say from now on, just one action per turn, okay? All right. Well, it's an AI that acts as on, it acts on oh, its own. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 19 to hit. Another hit uh, with no complications. That's 6 SP to the damage, and it has explosion 1. Does that mean that it deals one further explosion damage? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. Does your mech say anything? Oh, you mean the AI? Yeah. That is what I'm going to do to you later. <laughs> oh, you've made such a wonderful friend for yourself. I think the ooze wibble wobbles. <laughs> oh, the wi- yeah, the, the, the ooze is just cuddling. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot. I had a response for the ooze. The ooze oh. is terrified of this electricity, and it's in the cockpit trembling. Yeah, still. It cuddled yeah. up to me and stopped trembling as much. Titanic action at the end of your turn. The electrophorus moves from long to medium for crud, and from far to long for Demyon. It's now Demyon's turn. All righty. Demyon just, since the turret is automated, Demyon just pops a little bit of tea and drinks and watches as his turret fires. Okay, roll for fire. It's 20. Natural 20. Nice. That's a crit. 
There are special things that happen when you get a natural 20. Uh, specifically, you have overcome the odds and managed an outstanding success. You may achieve an additional bonus of your choice to the action. When dealing damage, that can be that you can choose to double the damage or pick an appropriate bonus effect. And what kind of bonus effect? Um, you could collapse the tunnel, separating yourself from the beast. You could make the... I mean, describe your weapon. What's your weapon look like? It's like a missile? It's 120 millimeter cannon. It fires a large shell. A large shell? So you could deal a hole in its armor, making its, like, defense lower, if you want? Like, it's coated in steel plates. You could rip some of those steel plates off, and then I'd adjust your roll table so that um, instead of hitting on, like, a 11-up, you'd hit on, like, a 6-up, because it lacks armor. Yeah, why not? Let's just tear it a new hole. <laughs> Describe that, and I'll give you some numbers at the end. Oh, Demian, just as he was sitting, he sips his tea. Fire at will. <laughs> Says to his turret, and the turret, Why bother? We will all die here. And just <laughs> pops a uh, cell somewhere in the general direction of uh, the beast, but somehow manages to land its shot somewhere between the plates. And the explosion just tears those plates off. The explosion tears the plates off and adjusts that core mechanic table. Now, when anybody tries to hit this Electro Forest, instead of a 6 to a 10 being a tough choice, that's just going to be a straight success. And instead of a 2 to a 5 being a failure, that's going to be a tough choice. A 1 will still be a Cascade failure. Nice. Is that the end of your turn? Hey, I still have my movement. I'll just a little bit back off. One range bend. All right, you're back to far. At the end of your turn, Electroforce will do a titanic action. The massive dragon-headed snake thing with electricity crackling all over its steel body can choose one of these titanic actions. An electric spine attack, you have to be in melee. Bioelectric arc can be medium. There we go, I can bioelectric arc crud. The Electroforce nice. fires... Hmm? Not Nice. No, it's not nice. It wants to eat you. The Electroforce fires an arc of bioelectricity. Choose up to three targets in the medium range. It's just crud. Crud's the only medium range target. And make a single attack roll. That's a three. <laughs> okay, so um, that didn't work. And instead, it I'm reading off of this table here. It says, failure. You have failed at what you were attempting to do. You face a setback with a capital S of the mediator's choice. And when attacking, you miss the target. So I'm going to say that the setback is that the bioelectric arc attack, which was two titanic actions, one of the things in Salvage Union that you can do is make things more expensive. This Electrophorus only has three titanic actions, and it can regain them at the start of its turn, right? So it used one to move one range band, and it moved two. It used two for that titanic action. It, like, coughs up a hairball, basically, and it makes its bioelectric attack more expensive. So instead of costing two titanic actions in the future it'll cost all three titanic actions and that's a very salvage union setback sort of thing to do so now it's out of titanic actions by the way and that's good and it is zara's turn zara has a cat mech and her cat mech i'm picturing like voltron <laughs> i'm picturing voltron with like this like robotic giant cats that you climb inside um it has a laser beam and this is a tunnel. So she says, you do duck. Do you duck? Yeah. Well, we've been ordered by our employer. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> you duck and the laser beam shoots across the tunnel. It's a good thing. It's a straight shot, right? And she hits that titanic snake right in its face plate. And it takes quite a lot of damage. I'm writing down the damage here. You guys are so glad Zara's on the team with you because that snake is sizzling in like a crispy way, like a fried chicken way, not like an electric way now. Oh, lunch afterwards. <laughs> After that, it is now finally the... Wait, did I do this wrong? I think I was supposed to have crud, the electro forest, then Demion. Okay, so I accidentally did a titanic action instead of my turn. Um, I was supposed to do my electro forest's turn, but I forgot. So I'll just do it next time. Crud 
it is back to oh wait no we have to roll again that is the end of the round so at the end of a salvage union round we roll again on the initiative table so crowd can you roll a d20 for me yep that's gonna be a 16 another quick draw one pilot chosen by the players acts first the play then passes to the npc group and this time i'm gonna remember for the electro forest act <laughs> okay so, so go ahead crud okay crud's gonna back up into long range again and he's gonna just do the exact same thing missile and let his ai pretend that he's the uh ai is firing at crud all right go ahead and roll uh that's gonna be a 13 for the missile oh, for the missile yes Ooh, now that... No, that's a success. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So with the explosive damage, that's going to be 10. And I got to mark off another heat. Yep. Describe so what that. it looks like. Well, just as we've seen previously, it looks like... <laughs> Describe Fred how farts. the Electric Forest is doing. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's not doing well. Describe that. Oh, it's 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 starting to have pieces fall off of it. And uh, it... it, it it's already looking like smelling like fried chicken in here, so maybe a little bit more of a fried chicken smell. <laughs> All right. Oh man. And, <laughs> and then the, the AI takes its shot. That's gonna be a twelve. Also misses. Or I'm sorry. Also hits. <laughs> no, that's that, that's that's because uh, our, our our friend made uh, it easier to hit it, right? Or else that would have missed. Uh, eleven to nineteen is a success. Yeah, so oh, it's just okay. yeah. Uh, so that's gonna be in more seven more damage. Seven more damage. You guys might actually not die here. Yeah, <laughs> and the AI cackles. That's what I'm gonna do to you, crud. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Um, and then it's the Titanic action time, and then Electro Forest's turn. Okay, Titanic action. So I'm gonna say that it reset. Um, for the round, it says Titanic actions reset at the start of their turn, actually. So, nope, not for the round, at the start of its turn. So it has no Titanic action, it just has its turn. Its turn is that it moves up to you, so it's instead of being long, it's medium. And then, at the medium range, it can do its bioelectric arc for its turn. It's going to choose up to three targets, and since it's only in range of crud... <laughs> <laughs> That is just going to be you, and it's going to fire at you. Oh, that is a successful hit with no, <gasps> no! consequences. You take 10 structure points of damage, and oh. your second target is going to be your turret. If it can act, it can take damage, <laughs> right? No, no, I'm There's not going to no be that, There's no be that SP mean. There's no SP assigned to it anyway. Mean. Yeah, okay. Just take 10 structure points of damage. I did. It hurt very badly. Ouch. Yeah, this is a gigantic... Electric eel snake dragon. That ends its turn. So we're back to Demion. Demion, you're at long range from it. Okay. Fire at the wheel. What did Will go, have my to cannon, do with this? go. And my cannon has uh, rolled <laughs> a 10. Now that's where before that would have been a tough choice, but now that's a straight success. Without its scales, this is so much easier to hit. How much damage does it do? It has 6 SP damage, explosive 1. And what does your AI say? Why bother? He won't make it. Look at him. He's already halfway there. <laughs> Crud is pouting. Your friend has almost bought a farm. And he will buy it soon enough. And you'll join him. We're all doomed. There's no escape. No tomorrow. Ah, shut it. Just keep calm and drink tea. Demian says while well, uh, pouring him another one of those cups of tea. <laughs> but the short still connects, so it gets 6 damage, explosive 1. Explosive 1! Nice. The length of the snake also takes damage. I have noted that. And the titanic actions refreshed on the bio titan's turn, which means that it can move closer... So now it is the there's four ranges, close, medium, long, and far. So it's now in melee range, close to Crud, and it's now medium to Demion and Zara, which means that it can do its bioelectric arc, which is gonna take its full all of its titanic actions. This will be all of its responses until the end of its until its next turn when they refresh. But it's gonna do it. The dragon head like the cheeks puff. <laughs> 
And it looks like it's, you know, like mm, about to spew electricity at you out of its mouth. And it's, it's the cheeks are getting puffier and puffier. Electrophorus fires an arc of bioelectricity. Choose up to three targets in medium range and make a single attack roll. So if this hits, you all get hit. Tough choice. I succeed in my action, but at a cost. The mediator gives you a tough choice with some kind of setback attached. Okay, it doesn't have very much hit points left. So unfortunately, it's not very well able to regulate its electricity. And as its chief cheeks puff and puff and puff, um, it kind of like goes down the wrong tube. And the snake is going to explode all over you guys. But it's going to try to go out hard. And I'm going to let it increase its damage a little bit. So the tough choice is that it makes is it will die doing this. <laughs> but you guys are going to take so much damage. As the snake explodes all over you in the tunnel, everybody, the electricity is zapping you. I'm going to have it increase its damage. On a successful hit, the first target takes 10 SP damage, the second target takes 5, and the third target takes 3. I'm going to have all of you take 10, because this snake is exploding itself to do that. That leaves me with 5. Oh, that kills me outright. <laughs> uh, my mech is down. Demian's down! How do I use the escape hatch? <laughs> Let's find out the mechanics of how to use the escape hatch. Reaction, escape, recommended system. Uh, I roll the dice and based on the table. I roll 19. That means I safely escape from my mech in close range. Nice! You safely escape from your mech and you are in close range. So what that looks like is that... Crud, does your mech still have structure points? Yes, I have five. Nice. Demian, you burst out, you pop out of your mech, and your mech, um, I'm sorry, it explodes behind you. <laughs> sorry. Describe the explosion of your mech, Demian. Oh, Demian just pops, uh, he kicks uh, the escape hatch with his legs, drops out of it, walks out of it still with the cup of tea, drinks, and in the background his mech goes boom. <laughs> That is kind uh, of awesome. Shrapnel fly and go around him, kicking uh, the rocks, kicking the ceiling of the stern of the floor. But strangely, it doesn't uh, went uh, anywhere near Timian as he finishes off his cup of tea. I'm gonna miss that samovar. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so cool! <laughs> awesome! Okay, uh, Zara with her cat mech, she like picks you up in her paw because you, you're like human and she is a giant mech and she will carry you out of here. <laughs> but first, she says, we must salvage. Oh man, there might be a, a rare relic behind this bio titan. Let's go deeper into the tunnel. What was it here for? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Damien, are you okay in the paw? Uh. He just uh, makes himself as comfortable as he can, just sitting down, <laughs> finishing his tea and throwing off the cup. Nice. I think she puts you on, like, the back of the cat so she can use her paw for walking. Oh, now it's not as comfortable since Demian has to uh, hold on dearly to his uh, to this cat, not hold to on, fall off. she's going for treasure, and she leaps and bounds forward. Crud, seeing this, goes ahead, just grabs him with the articulated arm. Nice. Th this is going to be a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> eh, whatever. What well, you should have hey, gotten destroyed. That guy, well, that guy <laughs> surely got his wishes come true. He really bought a, form, a farm. Oh, yeah, the AI. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The one that was certain it was going to die is the one that died. <laughs> he jinxed it. Yeah. He jinxed my mech. Oh, that reminds me. Uh... Uh, Crud's AI says, that should have been you. Nice. <laughs> okay, so Zara is loading her mech up with, uh, she finds relics and like, let's say it's a bunch of old machines that had attracted this electric snake to it because the electricity, you know, it was like curious, it could hear the electricity and it came in. So these are like ancient computers. And Zara is like, these are wonderful relics. I will take them with me. You guys can see they have no cash value. They're just like oddities. She's going to find something to do with. But you definitely could not have found these anywhere else in the world except for here where they 
like and imagine a machine just running on nuclear power for thousands and thousands of years in the bunker underground and she's loading her mech up with those she turns around to you guys with her it's a cat mech facing you and you can hear her voice over the comm system and she says thank you fire blazing kittens this is wonderful i could never have found these relics without you crud tells uh, demian what she's saying because he's not on comms anymore because he has no i am on comms i have a walkie talkie I suppose uh, we deserve some, let's say, hazard pay. A little bit of more for the risks we took to get here. With this relic, I can afford you pay you twice as much as I hailed you for. Thank you, Firebase and Kittens. Eight thousand gold each, or eight thousand dollars each for the weekend. And I keep my mech. <laughs> Unfortunately, I need to keep that. Anyway, oh. so... <laughs> <laughs> Let's drop this off at Sebastian and be gone. Alonzi? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you guys are back at the Bastion. Okay. That was a good adventure, right? Yeah? So good? So far, yeah. so good? Yeah. 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 Well, so, remember how you were like, the other shoe is going to drop? Uh-oh. When you get back from the canyon and you're emerging from the rim, previously... You had looked out as far as you could see to the horizon, and you had seen those red mountain crags and those sparse scrub brushes, and that was all there was to see, right? Uh Uh-oh. There's dust on the horizon. We gotta go. Let's go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Go, 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 go. Get this thing started up. Let's go. Kimian just takes out of range, which he uses as a close range weapon. Bring me closer. I'll hit it with my range. (laughs) Unpack the... Unpack the max trolley with we have to get them in the RV in Bastion quickly. Yes, we're doing it. Okay, you're going as fast as you can. Two horses and a covered wagon are on their way here. The first horse is ridden by a thirty year old human man, six foot one, hundred and seventy five pounds, blonde, pale skin, blue eyes. This man is wearing like a backpack, something covered by cloth, flapping in the wind. It's hard to tell what it is from this far away. The second horse is ridden by some sort of machine person whose head is shaped like it's wearing a crown. There's a screen where its face would be, and on that screen is the countenance of a human woman with blonde hair. They sort of match one another, albeit one is in person and one is remote, but they're getting closer. Well, you know what? They're not in mechs. I could probably easily take them. I know my AI wants to. (laughs) What's the AI saying? Feed me, human flesh. (laughs) Say. What's Demian up to? He's, he doesn't have a say in this. He's riding a mech. Literally riding a mech. Where a mech goes, Demian goes too. You're at the Bastion, so you're like sort of like mm-hmm. unpacking the mechs and putting them into the RV. I imagine there's like a back door that opens like an aircraft hangar that like, you know, like mm-hmm. put the mechs in there, you know. So are you unloading or are you... Getting in, hopping in a second mech unit to fight. Now, do we have a second mech unit? Yes. Ha <laughs> ha! That's the answer. Demian just hops in the backup mech. <laughs> and Crud's already in his, albeit very damaged. How many hit points do you have left? Or structure points? Five. Five. All right. So with that noted, Zara had been looking out at the figures. Her black braided hair whips the air as she rapidly turns behind her, looking at you three with a fear, a desperation in her eyes. Her mech is unpacked, it's in her RV, it's ready to go. And in her eyes, there is a resignation, a defeat. Just for a moment, but it was there. She says, Not again! Quick! Into Bastion! We must leave now! Okay, we get in Bastion. Alrighty, alrighty. Let's escape. Let's make a hasty escape. You got into Bastion and you're leaving? All right, that means the adventure ends here, safe and sound. Should we go to Epilogues? Yeah, let's go to Epilogues. I mean, I figure, obviously she knows these people. Obviously she scared crap, the crap out of her. And so obviously the mechs aren't going to do any good. I got five hit points. Let's get out of here. You're in the RV. Bastion's driving away. Machine gun fire deafens you all. rat a tat 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 Ping, ping! Bastion's hover base is being riddled with holes. Zara shouts, I've got it! And Bastion lurches, 
beginning to move, but the rat a tat 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 doesn't let up. With a screech and a groan, Bastion lurches to a stop. All is quiet. Deadly quiet. Well, I guess we're fighting anyway. Has it been long enough to at least have like instant repair on the mech? Sure. Yay! I'm going to say there's a second mech you can hop in. Okay. And that's why. Yeah. Transfer the AI over. Of I like my AI. All right. I'm going to say that you take, you're doing that right now. Demion, what are you doing? I guess I'm just helping him move his turret. Since I'm the only one who knows what to do with the range, who's not occupied with driving us away. Okay. Meanwhile, you notice that the Black Ooze is in your new mech too. And also all throughout this RV. Yay, friend! <laughs> the two horses approach the downed bastion. They stop at medium distance. Fancy seeing you here. It's a, I can't do them, but it's a British lady, whatever. Anyway, I'm not going to apologize because that detracts from the gameplay. I'll just say it's a British accent. Picture that. Fancy seeing you here. Still think you're fit to compete with me for the relics? The face on the robot screen smirks. I thought I'd burned your RV and hired away all your employees, but you found more? You three, how much is she paying you? Or you two. You two, how much is she paying you? She calls in. Oh, you guys are in the RV. Yeah. Mm. Wait, hold on. That would change things. <laughs> Whatever. Let's say she can see you. One million each. A million dollars from this person? Hmm. That's nothing. I can triple that if you join me. Hey, uh, Three million. Did you see anything looking like three million on this robot body? I don't think it has uh, this kind of money. And unless I see the money first, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not carrying it, of course. But, Nimble, you can vouch for me. And she nods at the blonde guy next to her. The following conversation is in Russian. Ivan, what the hell are you doing there? <laughs> In Russian, he replies, She pay good. <laughs> I don't give a wooden ruble for the... <laughs> I don't care about this. Why are you with her, not with us? <laughs> a bunch of Russian swear words. Be like, I pay the... I take the job that pay. I don't care what I do. Sure, so I... I you know, I burned down her mech. From the inside, I trade her. Whatever, it's not a big deal. Hey, I helped you with that uh, odd job on that job fair. Now you help me. Let's make uh, it, look, it look like we... Let's just pretend we didn't see each other. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the diamond is worth much more than three million. Okay, you buy me better than her. <laughs> fine, fine. <laughs> And you guys are in on something together. What are you planning? Don't know. Can you just destroy this uh, robot next to you? <laughs> fine, fine. For that diamond, you give me more like that, I'll do it. And this is from a pre <laughs> previous adventure for the listeners. They did get a giant diamond for, for Vanya, nimble. Eh, Vanya, dearest of all my friends. By the way, when you get back to 39 Sarsdam, could you tell my parents that I am alive and sort of okay? Do you know, I had, I had tea with your parents last week. I forgot to tell you. After the diamond, I visited them. You know, I said hi. <laughs> they know you're alive. I just didn't care enough to tell you. Ah, as <laughs> usual. Okay, now just push that robot off the horse and uh, let's say hands and go our uh, separate ways again. Okay, we, you know, we gotta make this look like it was a fight. <laughs> okay, we'll shoot something your way. Just in your general direction, not to hit you. <laughs> okay. That was all in Russian, so uh, Kurt doesn't understand Russian, does he? Mm -mm, nope. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Kurt, I want you to pop a missile just at that rock behind them. Trust me. But I want to hit them. Hit the rock behind them. Okay, you may hit the robot, but not that gentleman uh, near it. Deal. No. No kill. Demian just stands before the AI, that AI turret, 
looks it in the optic sensor and says, no, no kill. <laughs> Gentleman good, robot bad. Understand? No, I said deal. Ah, uh, deal. Okay. I, I want you to roll. This is for the robot's stubbornness. So um, the robot would really prefer to attack meat people. <laughs> okay, so the robot's... Ro- okay, I really wanted this to not work, so I want... I'm using the jail dice. And before you roll, Dimian shows a rage I, to the turret. I kept and, it in jail uh, too long. I kept it in jail too long. It rolled an 18. An 18. Okay. So the AI is aiming for the human, right? Nimble. Vanya Nimble. I forget his last name. Tarasenko. And this prompts... A fight is starting. And this prompts the lady to be like... She pulls out a armor-piercing weapon, like a really high-powered rifle, and uh, or like a rocket-propelled grenade. And she's like, they're attacking! She ducks behind her horse and fires off the rocket-propelled grenade. So you're going to hit Nimble, and then she's going to hit you back, and that's the order of turns. Um, so go ahead and deal your damage to hit Nimble. Um, the gun does... 6 SP with explosion 1. Okay, so the explosion 1 will hit Nimble because you weren't you were you said deal, right? You Right, no, he was shooting the robot. Right, right. Oh, okay. All right. So that'll hit her. She um okay. All right. She's behind the horse. The explosion 1 hits Vanya. Vanya, well, that's an explosion. Explosion would knock him off the horse too. The horses are scattering and in the melee, injured with like her robot arm dangling off and the other robot arm still attached, she's got a shoulder launched rocket propelled grenade and she aims it at Bastion. Missile. The rocket flies through the air and Bastion takes now Bastion's a tech level six RV <laughs> crawler, whatever. So Bastion doesn't explode all at once. But the back part of Bastion, where the robots were getting unloaded from, like the bay doors, like explode and then like they fly off. And they land like over there on the scrub brush. And now you can see all the mechs, right? And if she were to get a missile like right down the RV, she could blow it all up from right here. And that's where the state of things is. Demyon, it's your turn. I don't have my turret. I don't have any long range weapons, so I guess I'll just uh, try to fix up the uh, RV as best as I can with my rivet gun. Oh, by the way, I have an ability as a pilot, uh, mass field maintenance. For each ability point I spent when I activate this ability, I can restore up to 4 SP. So I guess I spent X amount AP and get uh, X by 4 uh, SP restored, yes? Yes, you're healing Bastion. That's really nice of you. So I guess... How many AP I can spend on this? Uh, just okay, do it how... once and, and heal it 4. Okay, let's just heal it to 4. Mm-hmm. Up to 4 SP healed. Excellent. That ends Demion's turn. He is repairing. He's Maybe he's put one door back on. And then it goes back to the other team. So now it's Vanya Nimble Tarasenko. And he is lining up the robot in his sights. And he unfurls his cloth that was on his back. And beneath it is a machine gun. <laughs> and he takes his machine gun, turns it towards his employer, and rat a tat a tat a tat a tat a tat a tat. The horse, unfortunately, gets blown away by this attack. <laughs> Sorry, horse, is gone. And um, the robot is taking heavy damage. Another one of its limbs is down. Okay. So that now it's back to your guys' team. And what's interesting is that one of the mechs lights up. The lights turn on and the mech starts to whir. And, and, like, and a mech shaped like a wolf. But as the lights turn on, it gets coated in an inky blackness. It's coated in the ferrofluid, you realize. It's the same solid black color that you saw earlier in the puddle. And the mech leaps out of the bastion and rushes to the robot. And it can only move on its turn up to her. It's not there yet. But the, the wolf is rushing to your defense. Gooey! <laughs> We're now back to the enemy turn. It's her turn once again. She has her face on the screen. She's got two robot limbs obliterated. Obliterated. Her horse is down she um she's like ah 
and she's like rocket rocketing everything. So she tries to rocket attack um, Vanya and Demyon. You're at the bay, right? So she's shooting there. So she's gonna try to hit you. I'm gonna have her roll. Uh, Demyon, you're not in a mech. No. Yeah, he is. He, he put her back on. Oh yeah, you are in a mech. Okay, good. Because I was gonna say. Um, five structure points of damage. I don't even know what that would be to a human. I'm really glad you were in that mech. Because as this well, rocket you explodes... Could, you could back up. <laughs> Yay, backups. As this rocket explodes, uh, Nimble takes, um, um, oh gosh, a rocket to the face. This is not good for him. Mm. Um, so about Nimble, it's cloudy and dusty where he was because a rocket exploded. And you can't see through the air. Okay, and we are back to our party's team. Crud, we're back to you. Uh, missile and, and turret right at her face. Roll to hit. This might be the last round. She only has one limb, like two limbs <laughs> left. Uh, that's going to be a 15 and a 18. Yes, that is, oh. I think, 10 structure points for the missile and six for the AI turret. That's going to be 17 in total. Yeah. With 17 damage, I'm just going to say to you guys, I statted this as a machine gun squad with 10 HP. They're definitely down. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely down. The robot flies apart in pieces. The screen soars through the air. It lands in the brown dust and the screen of her face flickers. And you can see her like smacking her her computer being like, no, no. <laughs> like how people kind of beat up the TV after football games. And they're like, turn back on, you cursed machine, you know. But then it flickers out with her angrily beating at the screen, you know, and uh, the robot is no longer under her control because it's in it's pieces. In pieces. Yeah. <laughs> the dust cloud settles and you can see Vanya nimble. Tarasenko is laying on the ground next to the horse. He's not moving and he's covered in dust and a red puddle is spreading underneath him. Oh, God damn it. Oh, and he also Anyone's took got three... To... Additional damage from those explosions. Oh, did he? Cred? <laughs> oh, he's right next to her, right? Yeah. Yeah. You killed him. <laughs> <laughs> you finished him off. <laughs> My AI says, I got this squishy being. Yay, me. <laughs> I have one last mechanic for you guys. The machine gun squad is equipped with a first aid kit. It says, oh, this I set of bandages, plasters, gauze, painkillers, and antiseptics allows you to patch up wounds in the field. A target creature of your choice in range regains three hit points. If they were on zero hit points, this restores them to consciousness with three. I have a first aid kit, too. Oh, oh okay, a crud. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what do you do with it? <laughs> I bandage the robot. No. <laughs> 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 I will bandage his friend. and uh... <laughs> He coughs and blood comes out. <laughs> and he says, in Russian, I owe you nothing after this. <laughs> yes, I don't, I don't understand you. <laughs> yes, sorry, stupid robot. Should be crockets. <laughs> <laughs> Just shut up and let me carry you to the med bay. <laughs> and then with you two arguing in Russian, I'm going to have the, the camera pan out as you cure him of his wounds. There's, you know, a futuristic med bay here. And uh, the two are squabbling in Russian. Crud, you still have that scepter. Um, but I'll just tell you what it does after the game. And uh, unless you want to do it. Do you want to touch it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Roll a d20. Okay. That's going to be a 14. You turn into a butterfly. <gasps> <laughs> Forever? You touch the scepter? I mean, I can't renege on it do you touch it again oh sure roll a d20 two you turn into a gerbil <laughs> i touch it again <laughs> 16 <laughs> a 16 is a goldfish <laughs> i flop on it again 17 <laughs> a 17 is a parrot fish <laughs> i flop on it again 19 and 19 is a kitten and i'll just let you know that a half work is 15 Okay, I roll a 15. Then. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the scepter of red skirt. <laughs> Every time you touch it with your skin, you have to roll. If you use anything other than your skin and touch it, you can transport it without transforming. Okay, I roll a 15, turn back into crud, and I wrap it 
I, I uh, wrap the handle <laughs> with a uh, a cloth really nicely so I can use it to zoom, zoom, zoom. And then I, I, I touch our new Russian friend. You, you no, what? you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> now, I'm going to save it for next time. But I do turn into a crab briefly and pinch him. And then turn back. <laughs> <laughs> all right i will send you the table after the game of all the animals you can just fill it in yourself just make sure there's an elf dwarf human half work on there too okay <laughs> do you guys want to hear the possible endings sure why not all right um if the players befriended the meld the black nanite ferro fluid ooze it would animate a mech and fight on your side against duchess mary and former employee vanya nimble tarasenko after everything has all settled down Zara looks at the black ferro fluid coated wolf mech. She beams with joy and says, That's amazing! You had my back! I do not know what to call you, Inky Black Ooze, but surely your name is Friend. Gooey, Gooey Friend. The wolf mech sits. Would you like to come mining with me, Gooey? The wolf mech pants happily. Zara walks up to it and, tiny compared to the size of the giant mech, hugs its inky black wolf front paw. Hi, friend! <laughs> And then a bad ending, and then a bad ending, and then if you let Duchess Mary burn down Bastion like she burned down Citadel. Nope. So, you guys, without your encouragement, Zara wouldn't have had the emotional strength to stand up to Mary. But because you had her back, Zara was able to fight off the competition and place her stake in this competitive field. The next time Duchess Mary of Tech, nay Placentia, and former employee Vanya Nimble Tarasenko run into the Bastion, they'll think twice about attacking it. This won't bring back Zara's... Oh, wait. Actually... Just Duchess Mary. It sounds like uh, maybe after <laughs> after this, I don't know if uh, Nimble is still employed. Yeah. The next time Duchess Mary of Tech runs into the Bastion, she'll think twice about attacking it. This won't bring back Zara's previous crawler that Mary burned down the Citadel, but it will keep her safer from now on. Good job, heroes. Yay! Yay. <laughs> is there anything else before we end this adventure? Not really, I guess. No, but I can now turn into a crab anytime I want, and I can turn people into things anytime I want. <laughs> Keep this thing away from me, or Ivan. <laughs> oh, I'll get you turned back to you, to regular you. No. Eventually. No. <laughs> Joining us this time were... Crud. Pink. Now you're a fish. <laughs> and Demian. Bring me back. Bring me back to my proper self. Goodbye. Bye-bye. See you. It's that part of the show where we tell you about a podcast you might enjoy. Have you heard of Everyday Conversations on Race for Everyday People? Everyday Conversations on Race for Everyday People is a cross-race conversation on race. They bring together people across race to share experiences, perspectives, and solutions. It's educational, insightful, and often humorous. No issue is too personal. People get real about their lives. Their mission is to disrupt the way people talk about race, stop hate, eliminate fear of differences, and spread love across the globe. Check out Everyday Conversations on Race for Everyday People, a podcast. <laughs>